Now, in the introduction video, uh, it has been made clear that the primary role of the JRC is to support EU policy making. Now, EU policy making or policy making in general is a great responsibility because policy making is always about shaping our futures. So, if we accept that policies shape our future, we also have to ask ourselves, well, who decides how our futures should be looking like? Now, to provide the best support to policymakers, we first of all need data, facts, and evidences to establish a common reality between society, scientists, and policymakers. We need to talk to each other. Perhaps more importantly, we need to listen to each other and we need to engage. Now, with the art and science program at the JRC, we have made an important step towards opening discussion on this divide between the scientific disciplines, art, culture, society, industries, different sectors. By producing installations co-created between artists and scientists, we create a touch and feel output to research that then people can gather around and discuss and create this common reality. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has had an accelerating impact on the digital transformation. And it seems that our JRC resonance cycle that we coined DATAMI to work on big data, digital transformation and artificial intelligence is of great actuality at the moment, even more than perhaps we had it last year. So I'm really looking forward now to the discussions between artists and scientists on this topic and within this new context. Buongiorno, secondo giorno della nostra iniziativa uh, Blumine presenta JRC Resonance. Um, Resonance third, uh, that time. The conversation will be in English from now on. The, um, uh, the experiment we are trying to, to do with this um, live broadcasting is to present a very interesting project of um, combination between artist and scientist that has been uh, produced and uh, taken on by JRC in ISPRA. And um, I have the honor to, uh, to introduce the artist um, and the scientist for today um, that uh, are Giorgio San Cristoforo and Valentina Paracchini. Um, for the first, first um, I will introduce the, time, the, the title and the theme of today that is uh, method, the method of uh, combining science and art with digital technology in order to get uh, new results, new, um, new possibilities that can help us to face the, the crisis we have and um, possibly find solutions. I will um, give now the, um, the voice to Adrian Hecken, who is the uh, first the person who started the project. Hi, my name is Adrian Eckels, and I'm the project leader of art and science at the JRC, the Joint Research Center in ISPA. Last time we discussed about misunderstanding and dialectics. Today I want to discuss methods. Of course, we cannot say uh, very important philosophical things, but I think that the method basically consists of three elements. The first one is the DIY element, do it yourself. The second one is the juxtaposition of disciplines. And the third one is the checks and balances by the European citizen. As to the DIY, we see there is very nice that you could find this together in a room with artists that are interested in their work. Whatever this discipline involved and whatever the specialism 
of the scientists, we see that <clears throat> some interesting uh, dynamics originate when we have these people together in a room. And for the scientists, it's much better to feel it, to live through it, than to read about it in some article or a book. Juxtaposition is important because we see that if we put many disciplines together and we have improbable combinations, that interesting things can happen. Basically, we see that if people are challenged to make it work, then uh, often it's the challenge in itself, meeting the challenge, is an important driver of the entire operation. And of course, we don't do it so much for ourselves, but we also do it to go to the European citizen. We hope that with the sci art installations, the citizen can start to understand what work the JRC really does to have a good grasping of it in such a way that he can effectuate good checks and balances. And that, I think, are the three basic elements of the method we use. Thank you. Hi, my name is Adrian. I'm going to turn it on now. Hello. So I can start immediately. Um, OK, so I make a little introduction. Um, yesterday, I start to express my wish for a permanent nomadic observatory on Psy society. With Psy society, I want to say it's when we calculate the probability of a measurement outcome to shape reality what actually seems our, let's say, unworld. Um, it is very important, I think, and maybe it would be even good to have this European Commission survey of practice of knowledge extratism, because today we do not speak anymore about the crisis of science. We speak about cognitive bias, what is even more, um, let's say, get nervous to think when we think about genetics. And today, the artist is Giorgio and Valentina, the scientists. They work together with Mauro Petrilli and Paolo Perani. And what, when we speak about biology, what was the first discipline that really opens in a kind of post-humanism, queer, um, feminist theory, post-colonialism. So it is a very sensible, let's say, um, argument. And what is very important is to add that sci art, and it's a little definition I want to give again, is um, an emergent property of the ecology of practice, as Isabel Stengel states. Movement interaction between practices. So when we look at Georgia and Valentina and the other scientists, it's clear that the practices are the key element. But we have also to say that when Georgia enters the gate of GSC, I think some panic um, goes around because um, his way of what we called the imminent utopia to in some way um, radiate the people with his ideas and to find the scientists to make a project. What is another important thing in the art and tatami, it was not so important to know what is the final project, but the process to go there. And he crossed the whole side, meeting scientists, and it was very in the idea of the, Christina for me for the exhibition design to cross the side to make this kind of um, interaction between practices. And at the end, what we have seen in the Tannhäuser Gate, so we have and it was presented again in the Building 100. So we have had Jill and Carlos Neck, what is basic to understand, what is the ecology of practice, and Giorgio. And Giorgio's gate with, in, in, a, in a way that um, when we listen to the scientists, they speak about the pattern of life and now about the sound of life. So what is very important in this kind of practice is that we also, I think at one moment, you speak with your scientists, we speak together, that the kind of sound as marker in um, genetic um, trend, um, transcription processes 
is was something totally amazing. I don't know how real this can be seen, but also this outcome to think about that the way of coding and template and what is common to science and Giorgio in his work could give even an outcome in a totally different way of looking inside what is the invisible forest. Okay, thank you, Freddy. Um, maybe uh, you, Georgia, uh, could um, introduce your your work, and then we will see the video, and we come back to a discussion with Valentina and Freddy too. Um, oh. from the yeah, please. Okay, well, the the Tanauza Gate is uh, a very special installation. It's basically sound art, but uh, it is made with with uh, two kind of very interesting science. Uh, I had the chance to to have my whole genome, the DNA, sequenced by Valentina and processed by uh, Mauro at the JRC, so I could use my data, my DNA to listen actually to it. And uh, I wanted also to provoke uh, some changes inside the DNA. I wanted the people to listen to uh, actual mutations of the genetic code by using radioactive elements. And that this was possible thanks to the nuclear security unit of the JRC. So it's, uh, it's a portal, it's uh, a rite of passage because it's very symbolic for me. Uh, radioactivity is not uh, uh, um, just a, a fact of physics, but more is uh, something uh, more related to alchemy and transformation. So I see it in, in two different ways. So the scientific one, which is very interesting and challenging, and also the esoteric alchem alchemic way, because truly, uh, a radioactive element is something that changes and uh, transform itself from uh, from an element to another element in the table of elements. So it's the real transmutations that that was dreamed by by the alchemists in the Middle Ages. So it's it's a it's nothing that has to do with uh, the politics of energy, but rather I touch the the theme of nuclear. Um, like like the stoicheion uh, of the Greeks, like the, uh, a fire that is capable to change, and it's all it's also a testimony of life in the universe. Because uh, as as we have energy going on in the universe, we have a, a live universe. When the universe will finish, will die, uh, there will be no more energy emitted in any way. So it's it's part of the of a bigger concept of life. And uh, it was incredible to to have this sort of installation at the GSC because uh, it was very challenging to use nuclear materials. Uh, I used actually strontium 90, which is the typical uh, nuclear waste material contained in two small uh, disks, which were uh, safe to use. And uh, I designed a projector to um, put radiation on a Geiger counter when people pass through the gates and then the, the, you can listen to the DNA and then the DNA changes because it's uh, provoked and uh, mutated by, by this radiation. So it was challenging by, uh, from a scientific point, from a security point, and uh, it was also incredible to have my, my whole experience at the GRC as a real life experience being there with the, with the guys in the laboratories so this this is uh this is the concept and and what happened Okay, sorry for the temporary uh, technical problem with my microphone. 
I was saying we see now the video of um, uh, Giorgio and we will come back to comment it later. So, can you please send the video now? So one day I wanted to unlock the secrets of life. My life, my past, my future. The scientist helped me to hack my code, the DNA, my genome, the 3.5 billion letters code, my operating system. I share this code with every life form on earth. So once I got mine, I translated it into another code because I wanted to hear the book of life in pure sound. And then I wanted a change. I chose nuclear reactions, unstable matter. Radioactivity is everywhere and common items, minerals, the atmosphere, the space, where it is man-made. Radioactive decay is the true alchemy of transmutation of matter. The search of truth is the search of the origins of matter. So I thought about building a machine something that could hold this unstable element and irradiate my genome to change it, to mutate me. The noise gate is an invitation to change. Transformation is life. Okay, um, it must be remembered that um, Giorgio is uh, basically started his activity as an artist, as a musician, and the music, the sound of uh, the video is in reality generated by the installation itself. Um, and uh, we will be back to this topic with uh, Giorgio later, but let me introduce Valentina Paracchini, who is a scientist that developed the system and worked together with, uh, with Giorgio. Uh, Valentina, you have, um, uh, you know, that the, the question of the day is the method and uh, the method you uh, use it to work together. Um, okay, the, maybe you can say bet better than, you can tell something about that. Can you hear? Yeah. yeah. What I can say is yes. So thank you, Giannino. What I can say is uh, uh, that uh, I just applied method, which is based, which is the base of my daily work, uh, to a new uh, opera, and uh, this was the, the the challenge that I took uh, with Giorgio. So I'm used to work uh, in science. I am a scientist. I am a molecular biology. So, and so I, I daily work with um, uh, scientific methodology and uh, rigorous uh, uh, experiments uh, and so on. Uh, 
and uh, I just applied the, 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 the specific methodology to something which is new for me. And on the other side, the advantage that we had uh, for this opera is the, the possibility to use um, an extremely new technologies uh, with a uh, high throughput and the possibility to uh, create uh, uh, thousands and billions of data, then, then Giorgio transformed into a piece of art. Okay, thank you. And this was, uh, uh, yeah, the... the, the, the Thank you, Valentina. Unfortunately, uh, your connection is not really good. So um, we have um, now Giorgio for uh, some other talks about your video, your, your installations. Um, maybe you can start saying something about the music that uh, is uh, in the video and it's also in the installation, how it is created. Well, the music is actually created by translating, because the method here is translation, uh, the, the nucleotide sequence of the DNA, the different uh, parts of the long molecule of my DNA into sounds. And this was possible thanks to mathematics, actually. You have to think about the DNA uh, just like a, a uh, a computer code. Instead of having a zeros and one, you have four different numbers. So it's a, it's a quaternary method. So in this way, you can translate any sequence of nucleotides into numbers. And as long as you have numbers, you can synthesize sounds uh, with, with the modern technology because, of course, sound is made uh, with mathematical formulas, uh, trigonometric formulas, so, so it's pretty easy to do it. Uh, and I wanted to not, to, not to create a nice sound, a uh, uh, nice music or whatever, uh, like the one they did at the MIT with the COVID. I wanted to create something that was uh, as pure as possible and as close as possible to the data. So the methodology here follows exactly the, the ancient origins of music because music in the Middle Ages was, was part of the quadrivium along with astronomy, uh, geometry and, and mathematics. So uh, it's basically to make the music come back to the, uh, its origins, which was, which was science. And you have to remember also that electronic music in the 50s uh, with Stockhausen and Berio Moderna and all the, the, the structuralist music was based on science. It used scientific instruments and scientific methods to translate the ideas into sound. So we are back at, to the origins, but with the most striking technology we have today, thanks to Valentina and the other scientists. Thank you. Thank you, Giorgio. Uh, Freddy, you want to ask you, you want to ask a question? Yes, I want to ask a question to Valentina because we always are inside the realm of sci art and tatami is an expression of it. So my question was, um, nearly all the works we have had, and very strongly this of Giorgio puts the question, we are in, uh, in genetics, so we speak about determinism, free will, questions people really are, um, are thinking about it, what does it mean for them? And I was asking when you said, yes, he transformed it in uh, artwork, we have I mentioned a little bit transcriptions, but the thing is, if you have this implication of um, analytical, political and ethical. What is what I think is what I ask in this kind of survey of practices, you know? What's, is there something what happens to you in this cooperation, in this, like we called it, um, interaction between practices? Well, Genetics always poses the question of the use of this kind of data. Um, in the reality of this project, uh, we defined a clear strategy. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, we used uh, 
a um, non-invasive uh, sample from uh, Giorgio to extract the DNA from, which was the saliva, instead of using, for example, blood. And then, uh, and then we decided to to uh, well, sequence uh, uh, as much as we could uh, his DNA and, uh, and uh, to provide uh, all the data to uh, Giorgio uh, without uh, um, any um, analysis uh, as, a, as a background on, on, uh, this, uh, on this data. Um, it was uh, hard to define which was the right strategy to uh, to such an experiment, uh, but uh, since the data uh, belong to uh, uh, Giorgio himself, uh, we manage well, we manage to overcome the issue of uh, uh, privacy and uh, uh, and the use of uh, of those. But the, the, this is a uh, this is one of the biggest question um, in a, a running genetics experiment on humans. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Valentina. It, um, it is, um, going back to the, to the method, um, would you like to maybe uh, describe how, practically, how did you work together? How do you combine uh, your, uh, your knowledge with, um, with the idea of Giorgio? How it was the process of working, actually, together? Maybe you both can. can uh, well, the, can I start, Giorgio? <laughs> so uh, for me, it was uh, um, yeah, it it was like a, it was strange. Uh, I heard uh, Giorgio's presentation. Uh, uh, the 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 time well the the uh, summer school in uh, in Ispra, and I immediately uh, uh, felt that there was something that I could do with him, and uh, and when we had the the the, the, the time to discuss uh, about what we uh, in JRC are, were doing and what he as an artist is doing. Uh, the the process uh, i mean it it was already there it it was like uh, the the idea was already there and we just had uh, the time to discuss uh, about the possibility and and the project uh, was uh, was done finally then it took time to develop and to ex uh, well from the scientific point of view and from the artistic point of view Opera, but the project uh, it was uh, in okay. Thank you, Valentina. Giorgio, maybe Giorgio? Have, um, well, memory. well, uh, I was uh, presenting uh, Valentina and Mauro, and uh, I got the chance to have a visit to the gen genomics lab. So once I got there, I got really inspired because I, I work every day on code, and uh, and uh, in that moment, I was in the lab. I I had this kind of illumination, like, uh, okay, I want my code. So with, to work with science, was, it was simple because I asked them what they are used to do to, to make analysis on, on, on the genome. They used to do it on other uh, life forms like plants or animals, and this time was human. And uh, so they were challenged to do this, this new entry. And, uh, and I asked ask them exactly the data as it is. So, and, uh, and um, in the meantime, I developed a system to translate this DNA into sound and uh, how to mutate it with radioactivity. And it was a continuous exchange of information between me and the, and the scientist uh, with many visits to the lab. And I was present as much as I could with Valentina in the lab because I wanted to see everything and Valentina was in, in, incredible because she she explained me everything it was a, a, an immense honor and pleasure to see science uh, developing in front of my eyes so, so it was very inspiring and and the idea was to get my data and to create something with that and Valentina did it perfectly and also Mauro they 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 work it like we work it like a, a scientific team reporting to each other uh, 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 
regular basis and with a constant communication. It was not, you know, that kind of art which is inspired by science. This was art and science mixed together, really fused together. It's, a, it's, it's something that I really uh, look for in my artistic practice to make a fusion between science and art. And this was the cheap on which uh, the DNA was sequenced by Valentina, is high throughput uh, technology. It's the latest, I believe, technology we have in DNA sequencing. Uh, and this is the state of the art, you know. They gave me th this incredible possibility to, to have uh, some, some, some piece of me, some, some part of me, my DNA code in my hand, which is, I think one of the most strangest feeling uh, a person can can have because you hold in your hand uh, the, the your operating system, and I treat this uh, code, the DNA, exactly like an operating system. This is the the point uh, which which I found very interesting, and the work together was very easy. Really, believe me, it was easy to work with them because we spoke more or less uh, the same language about numbers, about DNA, and I was always asking questions to them, and they always answered with, with enthusiasm. So it was a very easy process. Thank you, Giorgio. Um, Freddy, you have uh, the last word for concluding. Mike. I want to thank you, Valentina, and Cristoforo, and all the team what is working, Angela, Christina, to realize and all the people that do not know. What is very important for me is to what George said at the end, and I think also Valentina said it in some way, Sayard is something like a native language we have. We should we put it more, you know, because it is what I call the imminent utopia. And I think this is really to form the DNA and to have it with you, to have another kind of language we can have to explain also what we think, if it's really deterministic or not. So there's something like an invitation, you know, it's like a um, ritornello, something what you can feel, what can be altered. And I think it when Giorgio said, I want my code, I want it now, it was really something well, in a different way, it's creative, and important to do. Thank you. Thank okay, you. thank you. I think uh, our time is over for today. We will be back next uh, tomorrow, uh, same time. Um, thank you very much, Valentina. Thank you, Giorgio and uh, Christina and Freddy, Angela, and uh, um, tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.